everybody. This is Zach Howell from Strength Coach Select, and uh, today you're listening to the Between the Sets podcast with uh, Zach Howell and Bob Alejo. And um, tell me I didn't say that wrong. You didn't. You sound very Chicano, just like me, Alejo. <laughs> yeah, so so today on the show, um, you know what, before we even start that, you know, yeah. I, I wanted to, for the listeners, you know, um, we're, we're going to change some, change the way we're doing some things. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to start to, it's just going to be, um, coach, coach Leo and I on the, on the show on a, on a weekly basis. And, uh, we're obviously going to have a guest here and there, but we're just going to talk about different topics and, and some of the stuff that, um, is kind of going on in the field and some of the stuff that we feel like, uh, needs to be talked about. Um, you know, so just so, so the listeners know, you know, exactly what, kind of what we're making the transition into uh, rather than what we were doing before with the Steve for Your Mind podcast. Um, so um, just so that everybody that's listening kind of understands that. So today um, we're going to talk about kind of the, the foundation, setting the foundation for your athletes, um, setting the uh, the standard for what those movements are, and kind of the process of what you, you know, of what the coaches are doing on a regular basis. So um, coach, you know, what, tell me, tell me some of the stuff that you've done in the past, you know? Well, you know, I've never really thought anything different than, you know, using a bar, you know, years ago, we just kind of had a loaded bar on the ground and we, we start from there. But, you know, more and more, I, I, I start with the bar for everybody. I don't care how big you are, how strong you are, male, female, we're always going to start with an unloaded bar because you can never go wrong there. I think that's the key is. Once you're teaching, like, you know, the foundation of of where you're at is focused on technique, then use a bar. I mean, you're never going to make a mistake with that. You can always – look, you can always add weight, but, but you can always use too much. So it's it's good to just go straight, unloaded, take your time through the motions there from a technical standpoint. Um, that foundation, technical foundation, is where it all starts for me. I mean, we don't, you know, for a while, especially with newer, newer athletes, beginning athletes, and experienced lifting uh, athletes who are inexperienced at lifting. Um, everything for them is all technical. It's technical failure. Even though for, through our first couple, two or three, you know, assessments, evaluations, which are really not maxes, but it's the most weight they could probably handle correctly, which is going to be different than a pure max weight. Um, it's all technical failure, so everything should be geared to that. In terms of just foundation in general for movement, you know, I mean, I, I've never strayed from the fact, and it is a fact, that, that strength is the foundation for most performance. And when I say performance, it's not yards per carry or points per game. It's in our area, Zach, it's, you know, vertical jump, short sprints, change of direction, all those things. Strength is it. And, uh, in fact, um, uh, there's a, there's a, on Simply Faster right now, there's a round table on how, str- how strong is too strong and how long do you stay in the strength cycle before you change qualities. So it's not, it's not so much that, you know, you have to have this unbelievable amount of strength. It'll show up in terms of your analysis and your data. So again, you know, strength is, uh, relative to many sports. Uh, so I mean, obviously the strength required to run a 5K is a little bit different than the strength that it takes to throw a shot put. Um, but in the end, you know, it's about efficient movement. And I think all of that, uh, the foundation there has to be strength. And then from there, you move off into different qualities. So from a foundational aspect, I look at two things. And, and when I hear foundation, I think it's the same with you. You're talking about in the beginning. And so to me, it's technical skill and strength. Okay, so like, so when you got when you have your athletes for you know, let's say you've got a, and I know you worked with such a variety of athletes, um, mm-hmm. you know, from professional to, you know, just a variety of sports, you know, to the college, so, you know, you've, you've worked with such an array of athletes over your whole career. Um, you know, like for me, the first thing that that you know that I do when I bring the guys in, and every I think everybody does it, um, is. You know, I put them through kind of just like a short, a short little, you know, I, I want to say screen because I kind of hate the, I hate the kind of that terminology, but it's what it is. Um, okay. You know, okay. The, like the first thing they do when they come in is obviously we get a height and weight and we do all that kind of stuff, but like, right. I just put a dowel in their hand and I say, 
okay, this is, I'm going to show them the first move I do. I say, okay, show them, um, this is how you do an overhead squat. Gotcha. Right. I say, this is how you do an overhead squat. I show them, I show them once, I show them twice. And then I just say, hey, give me your, give me your best, your best job at what I just showed you. Gotcha. You know, and, and so for me, it kind of gives me a raw, a raw example of, of where they're at in a couple of different areas. You know what I mean? Right. And right. I'm, right. And then I just do a standard, I just do a standard like shoulder mobility with, you know, the bars on their back. And you're trying to kind of get your thumbs as touch as close as you can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I just put them through, you know, the overhead squat. I put them through that shoulder, that shoulder mobility, um, kind of that test, that exercise. And for me, like those are, those are, I take a couple pictures and then I measure things out and I make sure right. I make things look fancy on Photoshop and diagram it and all that kind of shit. Gotcha. Um, you know, but like that's how I, I, for me, I kind of tell, okay, well, you know, this, this guy's hips are obviously pretty, pretty, pretty tight. Um, you know, this guy's shoulders are, are pretty tight. You know, is there, you know, and then so I kind of go from there and I say, okay, maybe I, need to divide them up into this and this and this program, mm -hmm. um, you know, and see where they're at. Um, do, now, in your experience, have you done done pretty similar stuff, or what have you done? Yeah, no, you're right. So, you know, when you say foundational, you know, clearly now we, I think people can listen to this and you understand as you talk through things sometimes, the foundational kind of touches on several areas. The other part of your of your foundation, which is, skill or, you know, technical skill in movement, which is, you know, you're lifting, you're running, all that stuff. And then your strength is the foundation. The other part that's of the foundational place is assessment, you know. So before we even get to all that, you know, I, I, I do something similar to what you do. You know, we're going to do some assessments. We're going to do things that, you know, as much as we can – with a young athlete where tech, technique and skills not involved. So short sprints, vertical jumps, long jumps, um, again, these movement screens, which, you know, have kind of evolved into several things. And, and I will say one thing about a movement screen, you know, I think it's a good idea. It's not a horrible idea to have your own screening system. As long as you have enough data to validate it, and that the protocol is correctly. So that's the one thing that the FMS does have. It has thousands and thousands of bits of data on it that you can kind of rely on to go back to. And over time, you know, it'll it'll start trending per team and per position, um, gender sometimes, you know, I think. Um, so, you know, again, if you're not doing an FMS, you're doing some other screen, that's fine, but you need to make sure that that, that that protocol is valid and reliable, that it's the same test every time, that in fact you're, you're testing, you know, the test that you're in, in uh, implementing is going to show you what you want to see, right. you know, and that the outcome is going to be that. So, um, but yeah, for sure, you know, I don't put anybody into an unloaded bar until I've seen all these other things happen. Because even, you know, even a loaded bar might, and I say might, but why even have a might in there? Might hurt you if you, you know, we put a bar over your head and say, okay, press it over your head and now do something. Or even a press overhead, you know, maybe something that we would have saw earlier. So I don't put anybody into a training situation unless they've been assessed. Yeah, that, that, that's, that was like, you know, because I'll be honest, it was one of those things where I, I wasn't, I don't want to say I wasn't in a position I do it, um, but for like my last my last three jobs, it just didn't make sense. Yeah, that's possible. You know, so like I, you know, my last job, I was the only the only strength coach for you know whatever the teams. You know, so you got right. one hundred thumb student athletes. You can't put all of them through a screen. No, you know, uh, before that. It was 720 athletes, and it was myself and, and an assistant. You know, so, <laughs> you just can't do. You just can't put everything through a screen. Before that, you know, it was, you know, I I was that was my first job, and I was probably so stupid I didn't even know what screening was. So you know, <laughs> yeah, I looked at it, and I'm just kind of you know now, this is like the first first job where like I've been able to take some time and actually do some shit like that. Um, right. Right. So I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do it and how we can kind of evolve each time we do do it. That way, as you said, it's valid and reliable. 
Right. Well, you make a great point there. You know, everybody's quick to judge on what other people are doing. Oh, I can't believe he doesn't do this, or I can't believe he does that, you know. And until you're in that seat on that floor at that platform in that facility, you really can't comment on it until you have all the data. Like, you know, you have two guys for that many people. I mean, there's only so many things you can do. Now, that doesn't mean you don't do an assessment. It just means there's some assessments that you can't do. Right. So I do, you know, if that's your your best, if that's the best that you can do, then you, then I think it's your responsibility to do it. But um, I mean, I wouldn't hold it against anybody that doesn't do the FMS or any other kind of evaluation, um, unless they were, you know, saying something that wasn't accurate or true about that assessment. If you're saying I can't do it because there's two of us and there's five other kids, I'm like, well, God damn, I wouldn't do it either. But um, yeah, I mean, I think there's, I think the assessment in some way or a fashion, and, you know, for all those that are strapped with staffs out there, you know, your assessment can be, you know, in a large group if you wanted to in the in the warm up. I mean, there's plenty of things in a warm up that you could look at and assess. Now you'd have to have a a pencil and paper with you at the time to make sure you're marking off certain guys doing certain things or, or and, and women, but uh, you know, that's that's one way to knock, you know, two birds with one stone instead of having a day for assessments. And then let's train. Put the assessment in a warm up. You know, it might be that it takes a whole week. You know, some of us are lucky to have big staffs and you're able to do it. You know, in one day because you have enough people and the coaches give you enough time. Sometimes, you know, when you have 20, 30 people and you don't have enough coaches, maybe you take five or six guys a day over a week. I mean, that doesn't change. It doesn't change the outcome of the assessment, given you know it's done the right way. In, in many instances, if you put it the right way. It may be difficult to do an overhead squat, say, for instance, if your first squat day or your second squat day is, you know, tough enough to make somebody sore, then that could change the way the screen would look to you. But, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, that your responsibility is also to figure that out, right? Right. So let me let me ask you this. It's wrong topic. Like, so yeah. you say that, and um, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, okay, well, for those that are listening that – I'm, let's just be honest, there's more people in the situation that I've previously been in than there are yeah. of, of the better, right? Yeah. You know, so, like, let's talk about making your, your warm-up a movement screen. Like, I can think about, like, I would spend, if I was on this, running the deal by myself, and I, I look back at it now and you say that, and I'm saying, okay, well, I could have done that. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Um, you know, I would probably pick, I'd probably pick three or four movements in a warm-up that I would do, you know, two to three, you know, full repetitions of. Yeah. That I could, then I would have like a clipboard and I would have a, I would have, you know, maybe I would have like three different levels that I would rank somebody on. Yeah. I would just check off, you know, okay, while they're doing a lateral bound and a warm up, you know, can they land effectively? Can they push off, the, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mark, or minus mark or, you know, equal sign, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, just to kind of work your way through it, and that way you can go back and say, oh, I've got some, like, real real solid data here to be able to six months later say, oh, well, oh, shit, Johnny, Johnny's able to really land well or really effectively yeah. put off or, you know what I mean? So that, that's actually a really good, really good idea that I haven't thought of. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you can do, and you can do it a couple of different ways, too. So you're, you know, let's say when you don't have the time, and the staff, your first week of training can be arranged around your screen. So in other words, let's say you're worried about, you know, doing a, a total body lift on a Monday and then, you know, your warm up on Tuesday for say conditioning, you know, guys are sore and all that and you're thinking your screen's going to be different. Well, okay, well then just change that where you're going to do, you know, your warm up, let's say you're doing upper body training in the weight room on Monday, then your warm up will be upper body only. You know, maybe you're doing, you know, whatever might want to, you know, make some kind of sh- enough shoulder stuff in there so you can see. I like the plus minus thing. I mean, hell, you know, it, 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 it's up the top of my head. It'd be pretty damn tough for you to go one, two, three, right? Good, bad. That's what I would call it. Then go back to the rest. Right. Tuesday or Thursday, you know, now you can do an upper, now you can do your lower body warm because you're going to train lower body and it shouldn't have a problem because you haven't done that yet. Then the next, then the following week, you can go back on a regular training schedule. So essentially, you've done the same exercise, the same steps and reps at week one, just in a different order, and now you're just continuing your program. So you can kind of offset it so it, you know, it doesn't, 
it doesn't change the way. Same thing you would do with your with your max testing and you know like so uh, conditioning. Say so you wouldn't do a 300 yard shuttle on a Monday and then a short sprint test on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Right. You know, and you'd do it so that that test wouldn't affect you. Nor would you do, you know, uh, a heavy deadlift, uh, heavy deadlift test on Monday and expect a, a good squat max on Tuesday or Wednesday. So, you know, uh, that's one that's one way you do it. And you know, you also can do that with what what you know has been termed corrective exercises. If there's something you think your team needs as a whole, and believe me, teams will trend on their screening. You know, teams, you know, swim teams have a certain uh, screening trend, basketball, they all have different trends. You put that in your warm-up, too. You don't, it doesn't have to be part of your lift. It can be every day, you right. know, uh, that sort of thing. It, that's a big part of, I think, you know, especially at those levels where you're challenged with a staff is to economize your time. It's You know, you, you have to kind of get away from your, okay, we're going to do this test on Monday and this test on Wednesday. You know, just sometimes you don't have that luxury, like you said, more, more right. than not. Yeah, so so if you had, like, let's say, um, I guess let's move away from the screening. So like, let's say okay. um, if you had two lower body exercises, like this mm-hmm. is the first time that the kids have never touched the weight room. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what are you, you going to do day one? Those two well, yeah, my, my freshman program right out the gate, and that also includes transfers, guys who come in from other schools at no matter how old they are. They're going to do the freshman program because I want to see it. I want to see them technically perform it the way I want to see it. It's for four weeks with with uh, squat, bench, and Olympic-style deadlift. We're going to go five sets of five. No numbers pushed on. I change the numbers. And really what you want to do when you have the chance to do it is your, your best guy should be on those freshmen. So for me, I took the freshmen. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to take them and watch them as much as I could because the other guys knew what they were doing already. They were training. They had max numbers. They had percentages. I want to make sure I want to see these, these technical skills perform just the right way. So we went five sets of five twice a week on everything, So except for the squat. So we'll go – Bench press, two-legged squat on one day, one-legged squat on the other, either a step-up or uh, a reverse lunge, and the Olympic-style deadlift. And I'll stay with that for a solid four or five weeks. The Olympic-style deadlift I'll stay with for almost an entire academic year until I get them to, you know, to be cock strong off the ground. So when we go to high pulls or cleans or snatches, I don't have to worry about them doing the weight because we'll go to about 50%, 40 to 50% of their max deadlift, and we'll have load on the bar immediately. Um, so that's that's what I do. With the kids that are incoming, as soon as they show me that they know what they're doing, because everybody comes in and says, oh, yeah, I've cleaned. Oh, yeah, I've squatted. And then, you know, when they do it, it doesn't look anything like what they say it's supposed to look like, right? So that's why I don't just say, oh, you squatted before? Okay, so load it up. You know, like that, that's a mistake. And so they're out of that freshman program probably earlier than most and with the training background. So I don't have to worry about them really getting sore because they've come from another place. Right. But that's, that's, that's how I start everything out. Five sets of five, manipulate the weight. Um, and it's really that, you know, put on more weight, add more weight, add more weight, take some weight off. That's heavy. Take some more weight off. And then I like, I like five sets of five because it gives me the right amount of volume. It's the right amount of sets. It's the right amount of reps per set where guys aren't getting tired, or girls, and uh, it, it sets us up at a at a moderately heavy weight towards the end. I'll and then when I go to test them, I take the top weight for the five reps, and I call that 85 percent. Now it's not a true 85 percent because it's not a max effort, but it gives me a conservative number to start with when we start doing an assessment for their strength. And I call that an assessment because that first test is certainly not a max. Like they barely learned how to do it correctly. So I'm looking for technical failure, which almost always happens before physical failure at that level. Right. Okay. Yeah, so like for me, the first thing that I'll do is, like I'll, I'll take them through. I'm probably a little more, like I'm just, just I probably would I personally probably don't ramp it up. Like, like I probably look at my stuff after what you just said, and maybe I'll do a little more a little sooner. You know, like, like I, I'll use 
I'll do like a kettlebell goblet, uh-huh. you know, and I'll do like a dumbbell RDL for like two weeks. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? And then, and then from there, I'll go like weeks three and four, we'll add the barbell and we'll do that for four weeks. So like what I do is, is I just, I just make sure that they can really hammer those basic movements with the dumbbells or a kettlebell. Gotcha. And I hammer those to like, but I will do heavy tempos. Like we'll go, you know, five second eccentrics on, on all of them. And, wow. And, and so then we'll just, we'll hammer it that way and then, and then we'll change and we'll go to, go to the barbell, same exact movements, except we'll start in a front squat. I don't do much back squatting anymore. Okay. Um, more so front squat, pit shark, some box squatting. You know, that's about, gotcha. um, but yeah, I mean, that's a little bit different, but not much, I guess. Um, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hold it against anybody going conservative, but I think there's a difference between going conservative and going slow. I think I, I think that's more conservative than I would go. I mean, I, I think the the kettlebell squats good, but I mean, I think in the in the end, most everybody, I think they're probably not not that bad off. So what we do is something similar to that, in that the the warm up that we do before we put any weight on the bar is a barbell warm up. So they're on the platform. They're going to do an overhead press for ten. They're going to do a, a squat, whatever squat they're doing, front or back, uh, for 10. And then they're going to do a pull, depending on what they're doing. So with the incoming kids, they're going to do a an unloaded deadlift with a bar. And so they're not rushing through it. I make sure that they show me exactly, because there's 10 reps of an exercise, 30 in a week, that they get to practice. So it's a super important part. I'm convinced that's why my guys are so technically sound. And I'll start that bar down at shin height, which is typically the height that it would be if they had weight on the bar. If they're doing high pulls, then that deadlift would turn into a high pull. If they're doing snatches, then that part of that warm would be a snatch. But the other thing we do do is what I call a plate squat, where you're you know you're going to get in your squat stance, and you're going to take a five-kilo plate and stick it straight out in front of you and do your squats. I, I like that squat better than the goblet squat, and I'll tell you why. Because if you watch the goblet squat or even some of these one-legged squats, you have to hold the bar in tight, right? And if I'm standing in the mirror right now in my in my office, and my shoulders are rounded because I have to hold that thing. Nobody squats with a rounded top shoulder. So I've gotten away from that and gone to either just a regular, you know, holding two dumbbells straight out in front that are five pounds, or you can retract your shoulder blades. So I, I don't, I, you know, I like the squat pattern thing, but there's tons of ways to get the squat, squat pattern. I don't like it with the kettlebell because of the rounded shoulders. Take a look at that in the mirror next time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll look at it. So other than that, you're right. You know, you get those patterns down. So you're conservative. I wouldn't call that slow. Um, but if I see somebody loading really, really slow, I say, you know, we can speed that up a little bit. You're conservative just that, you're, you know, you start with an extra step ahead of mine. But as long as you're, you know, you're moving kind of at the rate of everybody else is, um, I think that's fine. I, I don't think you can ever be too conservative, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I do agree with you, though. There is some times where, you know, maybe people do do those do those basic things for, I don't want to say too long, but I mean, that's just the that's honest truth. It's like sometimes, no. sometimes you can progress a little bit quicker than what you're doing, you know. Yeah. And, and some people don't. So my point on that kettlebell squat, the kettlebell squat is a squat that you do eight times, probably maybe for four to, I'd say max eight weeks ever. It's like you should never have to return to the kettlebell squat after eight weeks of your life. <laughs> That's, it's not a, it's not a core lift. It's not, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to play defensive tackle at a, at a power five school doing kettlebell squats. You know what I'm saying? No, so it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a squat pattern exercise. Um, it perhaps could be something that that part of the return to play, but a short period. But you know, when I hear kettlebell squats as a core exercise, I say, "Gosh, I hope we play you guys." <laughs> you know? Oh yeah, I mean shit. I mean you got I mean, you got I mean, you got guys that. Well, it just comes down to you know, do you train hard or, or, or you don't? You know. Yeah, I would agree. You know, and, and it, 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 your progression to a point where, like, your guys understand strain and tempo and, you know, because, I mean, I, I could get into all that stuff, but. Sure. You know, I, I'm a, we, we do stuff that, I, I believe that, it, I, I think the training at a high tempo creates such a great work capacity out of your athletes. Um, like, I love it. You know, and that's, and that's the way that we train. I'm not saying it's for everybody, you know, but, right. you know, it just depends. It depends on yep. from coach to coach and what their style of play is and all that good stuff. So, 
Temple is important. I, I would say one of the biggest things, oh well, one of the biggest obstacles that freshmen have in any sport at the college level is the pace of everything. Right. The pace of practice, the pace of lifting, the pace of class, the pace of time. It's so much different than what they're used to. So if you can infuse pace into their training, and of course, you know, when you're building strength in the beginning, pace is critical in terms of it shouldn't be very fast because then you're not really working on strength and strength requires recovery, but there still has to be some pace to it. In other words, they finish their bench, they can't just be walking around before they go to the next exercise. Like, come on, let's go, let's go, you know, keep moving. Um, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've said that many times about people like, you know, it's, it's the, the pace of the sport itself, you know, the app, everything is faster. I, mean, I remember seeing some of our quarterbacks at UCLA, uh, freshman kids coming in and they would be taking snaps and handing the ball off into the hip of the runner because they're just too damn slow, right? Like, come on, or, or getting, you know, getting hit by a pulling guard, <laughs> you know, coming out of the, coming backing up from the center. Like, come on, let's go. You got to get going. So that pace thing is important. Yeah, no, 100%. So, well, I appreciate your time today, coach. So we hit that, we hit that, I think we're in that 20. Oh, baby, we're at like 30 minutes. So that, I, uh, happens. Yeah, it happens when you're talking about the good stuff. So I appreciate your time today, Coach. Thanks for thanks for uh, taking time out of your day. All right, Zach. Look forward to next week. All right.